Close your eyes. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And ask yourself, what kind of breathing would feel really good? Which parts of the torso need to be nourished by the breathing? And allow them to be nourished. All too often there's a tightness in the chest or a tightness in the stomach, which constricts the breath. We don't get the full energy that we could out of the breathing. So try to relax things all up and down the front of the body, the sides of the body, the back. Think of the body breathing in as much as it wants, breathing out as much as it wants. As you're doing this, you're giving yourself a good place to stay. We live in this world where it's very hard to find a place to stay. Things keep changing. And this is not just physical places. People's values keep changing. What's good this year is bad next year. What was good last year is bad this year. And as for the good and bad of the world, they're not really all that certain anyhow. We come to the Dharma because the Dharma has some unchanging principles that we can take as our foundation, that we can take as a solid place where we can stay. Generosity is good. Virtue is good. Concentration, discernment, these things are all really good. They were good in the time of the Buddha. They were actually good before the time of the Buddha. He simply discovered what really is good in the world, set it out for us to, to know. And these things are still good now. When you take your stance on goodness like this, unshakable goodness, then you really can find a sense of well-being. So more than 2,600 years ago the Buddha said, focus on your breath. Breathe in a way that gladdens the mind, that steadies the mind, that releases the mind. Okay, what would gladden your mind right now? What kind of breathing? What kind of breathing would steady your mind right now? What kind of breathing would release your mind from its concerns and worries? Try it out. Explore. His way of teaching meditation is different from what we often run into these days. These days there are two extremes. One extreme is that you have a method that you follow without asking questions, without deviating, without making any changes. It's like putting your mind through a meat grinder. The other extreme is to say, well, there is no method at all. Just allow things to happen on their own. Accept whatever is going to happen, you'll be okay. You don't learn anything that way. You learn by asking questions and trying things out. You explore. You learn how to explore with a sense of enjoying the exploration. That makes it much better to be here. So the Buddha is not forcing you to stay here with the Dharma. He's actually saying, hey, look, this is a really attractive place to stay. And you see that if you don't stay with the Dharma, where are you going to stay? You stay with other people's opinions, which wash you here and wash you there. Sometimes they wash you up on the beach and throw you up against a cliff. You can't take the opinions of the world as any kind of guide at all. But once you've got the Dharma, it's like a post at the edge of the sea. The, the water rises, the post doesn't rise. The water goes down, the post doesn't go down. And it's safe.